My name is Adam Ziliax. I oversee our technical support and our sales operations here at Pharonix. With me today is Iman Mehta. He's our VP of Product Management here, and what he'll be doing is stepping through and giving you guys an overview of a lot of the latest uh, updates to the platform that we've put out in the last little while, as well as sharing some tips and tricks and uh, such with you. I'll be manning the chat and the uh, Q&A section here, so if you have any questions, feel free to throw them down into the uh, question and answer section here and we're in the chat session and I'll be answering those as we go through and we'll share any of the bigger ones with the group as a whole at the end of the session. Uh, right, again, thank you very much for joining us. Iman, over to you. Excellent, thank you very much, Adam. Hi, everyone. Thank you again for uh, joining us today. Looking forward to spending the next uh, 45 minutes or so with you. We're gonna make sure that we end on time. We do have a lot to cover. My main objective today is to walk you through how to best leverage DeepFreeze Cloud. Um, so you're already a customer of ours, and we want to make sure that you're aware of all the features that are available to you in our product. Uh, so if some of these features are new to you, you have any other questions about it, know that today I'm going to rush through it a little bit. Uh, but if you do want any more details, uh, we are here to help you and walk you through anything that may come up. All right, so the agenda for today is we're going to talk about the six enhancements, uh, recent enhancements that we made. Obviously, we've made like 10 or 15, but uh, I want to talk to you about six major enhancements we've made. And then I'll walk you through some 10 tips uh, that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, you know, I talked to tech support and some of the sales engineers in our in our company, and I wanted to understand what some of the pitfalls that you're running into, or what are some of the things that um, customers are often asking and that they're not aware of. So the objective today is to kind of tell you and walk you through all those, and hopefully you'll learn something new from all this. Uh, please do make a note if you have any questions around uh, if you want anyone to walk you through any of these things, we are here to help you. So just make a note and we're happy to uh, walk you through some more details. So let's get started with the enhancements. As far as the enhancements are concerned, a few months ago we released a, a newer version of anti-executable where, you know, when anti-executable uh, it's been around for 10 or 15 years now, but the point of anti executable has always been to allow you to quickly authorize everything on a machine that's already installed. Uh, but what customers found was that it was perfect for environments where you have a brand new workstation, it's just you know, newly uh, fresh and newly imaged, and then you go ahead and authorize everything on that machine. Uh, but some of the customers were asking for the ability to actually put it on their environment for a while, listen in on what's going on, put it in this quote-unquote audit mode uh, so to understand exactly what their users are running. And then they wanted to step through, create their own control list, and block, allow things that they want. So the second stage that we introduced was the ability to block everything that's in the control list that you have said is blocked. Um, then as a third step, we've made it so that once you're very confident with the control list that you've created, you can go ahead and block everything. And by everything, what it means is that even the unknown stuff that is being run by your staff in your environment will now get blocked. Once that happens, you will be notified on your control center, which I'll show you next, um, and then you'll be able to make an informed decision of whether or not that uh, application is something that you want to allow to run or not. So essentially what we've done is we've improved on what we've got today and we've provided you a, a more granular control of what to do with anti-executable. 
So we've always had a management portion, but we've vastly improved it with a brand new anti-executable dashboard. Uh, so if you go to the home page itself and you click on anti-executable, uh, you'll be able to see the dashboard, and that's basically your control center for anti-executable, where you are going to find out you know, which machines are protected, what are some of the violations that you're seeing, and you know, what are some of the blocked applications that you're seeing. You're going to then look at those files and choose which ones you want to allow and which ones you want to block. Whether you want to block it in the control list of just that policy that's applied on that machine or whether you want to block it on every single policy that's in your environment. So you'll be able to go in and build your control list and then uh, enforce it later on. Uh, from within here. Also within this dashboard, we'll recommend to you uh, when you should move to your next stage. Uh, so when we feel like you have done enough of a job to build your control list and you're, you're starting to block less files that are, um, you know, authorized, you'll be able to then uh, go ahead and turn on your full protection with AE. All right, so that's anti-executable. Hopefully, you'll have a chance to look at that. So building on the dashboard that we created with anti-executable, the anti-executable dashboard, you'll notice, is very, very interactive. You can actually uh, filter through, do drill downs, and then within that same dashboard, you'll be able to see all the workstations um, that are affected. So you'll be able to filter all your workstations. So we took that same functionality usability and put it into a brand new defreeze dashboard, which is also available to you from your home uh, page when you click on that home icon. And that deep freeze dashboard now will show you the status of your workstations, wh whether your works your uh, deep freeze is up to date, out of date. Um, also, you'll be able to filter uh, with your groups, your policies, and any tags that you may have uh, placed on your computers. Uh, so. Hopefully, you'll have a chance to play with it. Essentially, the idea was you're used to working through the defreeze on demand page, uh, but we wanted to give you a nice uh, widget control where you have this uh, full on view of exactly what's happening on your defreeze workstations. And of course, we plan to continue taking your feedback on this and build out all the other applications as well so that they have interactive dashboards like this uh, available to you. The other thing we're very proud of recently, we uh, released our mobile device management uh, product. Uh, so a lot of our customers were asking for the ability to not only manage their Windows and Mac machines, but also manage their iPads and their Android devices. Uh, so should you have an iOS environment, for example, we do support your uh, device enrollment program that Apple provides uh, where you purchase an application. Uh, an iPad, for example, from Apple, and you'll be able to automatically enroll it into our MDM solution. Uh, also, the volume purchase program, which is the VPP there, uh, you'll be able to purchase uh, applications on volume and then distribute it to your uh, devices. So some of the things you'll be able to do is manage your application catalog, do over-the-air uh, configuration settings. We have a lot of restrictions that you can put on that machine and enforce them within seconds. And uh, of course, uh, playing on the deep freeze, you can also remote uh, wipe. So this is remote wipe. It's not, of course, a deep freeze, but um, you know you get that more control over that machine um, uh, from one centralized console. It is very intuitive. So what we did actually is we, we pulled a lot of our education customers and we asked them what is it that they wanted to see in their MDM solution. Um, I like to think of it as a very simplified version of MDM, but we did that because we wanted to be we wanted it to be very light and fast and efficient. Um, so hopefully the features that you see in there are the features that you want. Uh, should you have any feedback on the functionality of our product, uh, and if there is anything that we're missing, I don't think we are, we're happy to uh, work with you on that. Um, so 
you'll be able to have a full-on dashboard again. So one of the things that we mentioned in this webinar is we have a ton of dashboards and we wanted you to be able to quickly navigate and understand these uh, dashboards. So there is a dashboard. You'll be able to do live actions on those devices as well from the devices uh, page. The groups page is where you group your, uh, your devices and then apply restrictions to it. So that's where you apply your policy on that machine. Um, and then apps is where you develop your application catalog. And then settings is where you set up your DEP, your VPP, your Wi-Fi, your wallpaper, and all that. OK? The next thing I wanted to talk to you about was Active Directory uh, integration. So. Some of our larger customers, um, you know, who wanted to have more than 15, 20 uh, administrators in their environment, and they did not want to have to re-enter their users um, into the DFreeze console, we've we're introduced a new feature called Active Directory User Management, and essentially what that does is it allows your users to use their Active Directory credentials to log in to the dfreeze.com console. Um, we, you will be able to set, set their permissions uh, based on their OU and uh, you know specify whether they're super administrators, administrators, and which sites, for example, they have access to. You know, moving forward on that Active Directory integration for users, we also wanted to do some Active Directory integration for computers. Um, so now the computers can now also inherit the groups uh, and, and group those machines based on the Active Directory OUs that are on that machine. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to try those features out they are available to you if you're not an ultimate customer of ours uh, for you to trial for 30 days deep freeze mac on-demand actions what does that mean so all this time you've had to use your deep freeze mac by uh, thawing and freezing through the policy interface what was happening before is that you were able to thaw and freeze the machine on a heartbeat basis. That heartbeat used to update every four hours or so. So it could freeze in 15 minutes or it could freeze in four hours. Um, of course, you can freeze and thaw on the machine itself, but what we wanted to provide you was the ability to actually do it from within your console itself. So good news is you can now actually perform uh, live actions on those machines. Uh, they are limited, meaning I'll show you what are some of the uh, functions that are available to you. Mostly it's freeze, thaw, shutdown, and restart. And uh, what you'll need to do is if you want that functionality to work, all you have to do is go into the policy of that um, device, the Deep Freeze Mac uh, policy. And in there, there's a heartbeat setting, and you just want to set that to enable live action. All right. Up next is some of the improvements we've made to our alerts uh, functionality. Um, so of course, we've always had alerts. Uh, currently, today, we have anti-executable errors and antivirus alerts. Um, when we switched our antivirus from the Viper SDK to the Bitdefender SDK, uh, we did introduce new alerts in there as well. So hopefully, you'll have a chance to uh, try out those alerts. and the what. The neat part is that we did introduce mobile alerts. So if you have our DFreeze Administrator mobile app installed, you will get push notifications uh, to your um, mobile device. Oh yeah, and uh, one more thing I wanted to mention was, you're probably thinking to yourself, how come there is no defreeze uh, alerts? So uh, coming soon, we will have the ability to alert you if a workstation is thawed for more than a specified period of time. Um, so uh, look out for that functionality coming soon. So that was the six enhancements. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Let's walk right into the tips. For the tips section, I have a couple around access control. Uh, access control, um, essentially what we mean by that is how do you make it so that 
in your environment, you provide access to only the features and functionalities that you want to make available to your administrators. Um, so we have several recommendations around that. Um, of course, we have uh, the ability to group your computers. So if, if in an environment you have uh, just computer groups, then if you just create a defreeze limited administrator, you can assign that user to a group and then all, they only see that computer group. However, if you have a very dispersed environment, you have several offices or several buildings that you're managing, and you have several administrators, we do have the concept of sites. What sites lets you do, it lets you create secure silos for your devices uh, so that you can then designate certain administrators to be only able to access that site. And again, like I mentioned, for Active Directory integration, you can actually do that uh, through the Active Directory and just specify what OU is authorized to access which site. User management, uh, like, you know, you're probably aware of this, but you should try and uh, make sure that you're, you're very comfortable with the permission sets that are available to you. So if you're a super administrator, for example, you can see everything in your environment. If you're an administrator, which my account um, at Pharonix is, is an administrator, um, I only have access to one of the offices. So you can do that uh, in your environment as well. Uh, we have a reporting administrator, so if, for example, you have power save and you just want someone to have the ability to generate reports, then you can use the reporting administrator. If you have an environment where, for example, you have teachers who just who you just want to give the ability to freeze or just the ability to restart the machine, then we have something called a limited defreeze administrator. And that will only show the defreeze on demand functionality to that user. And best of all, you can actually decide which computer groups they can see as well as which, which actions they're allowed to do. So maybe you want to allow them to just freeze and restart a machine. So if they find a thawed machine, they can only freeze it. Or if they want to refresh your machines, they just restart that computer. Okay. Another th item that uh, some customers are not aware of is if you have, for example, a contractor in your, in your building, or if you have a teacher who needs to make an emergency update to their workstation, um, you can now do that through an OTP. An OTP is basically a one-time password. One-time password is under the utilities page. And how it works is, is you can, they will read to you the token on the interface, on the defreeze interface. You just input it into, in, into this interface, you click on generate, and it will create a one-time password for you, which you can share with them. The beautiful part of that is that they can, you can say you can thaw the machine for just a single use or multiple use. And that password will expire at midnight every night. So a lot of customers want the ability to do that, but they don't want to create a new password or share a password and then have to change their policy to change that setting. So hopefully you're aware of this functionality um, so that you can empower your users in your environment to actually thaw the machine if they need to. Getting organized. So one of the crux of deep freeze is we've always wanted to make it very easy for you to find and search things um, so what we from the onset when we were developing this platform is we created this concept of tags and this tags we, we did not just do it just for computers. We, you have the ability to tag your mobile devices, your policies, your groups, your users, if you're using user stats and your managed software. And then essentially if you go to the, the search bar at the very top, you'll be able to then search and find exactly what you're looking for. And um, during the demonstration, I'll also show you that all the different searches you have available to you. The grid control, for example, under the computers page has the ability to search per column. So hopefully you have had a chance to play with those new grids that we introduced um, last year. 
bandwidth management. So I'll have a couple of tips around bandwidth management as well. Um, some customers uh, do have limitations on their bandwidth, uh, and they don't always want uh, every single workstation downloading everything from the internet. Uh, so for our software updater, which allows you to update your Flash, your Java, your your Chrome, uh, we provide you to the ability to actually set up a cache server. So even for your antivirus definitions, that machine will serve as your local repository where it will download all the required uh, software and then distribute it from within your local network to your workstations. So if you do have that pain, hopefully you'll be able to use that uh, cache server setting, um, or it's a utility actually, and then you go into each policy and set up uh, which uh, cache server that workstation will uh, grab their information from. All right. For bandwidth management, we also introduced something called a full installer. So what the full installer is, is it, when you download it, it's about a 200 megabyte file. And it's essentially every single installer that we have, uh, whether you have it enabled in the policy or not, will be in that executable. And then we'll wrap it into one executable, we'll bring the policy in there too, and then if, for example, you want to prep a machine offline, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to now uh, provide all those settings and install everything without having the need to connect to the internet. If there is an internet connection, uh, our policy will just double check that the policy is up to date before it uh, applies that policy on those workstations. So hopefully you have a chance to try that functionality out. I mean, of course, if it's not a big issue for you to save bandwidth, then all the other options that you have uh, will work perfectly for you. Another item that um, we enhanced, um, I think uh, almost two years ago now, is the ability to for the cloud agent to, to self-designate itself as a relay. Uh, what that means is before, for you to be able to use deep freeze on demand, you had to run a, a, relay, a relay on that machine. So you have to install this relay to be able to perform all these live actions such as, we call them live actions, such as uh, freeze and thaw. What's changed since then is that is completely optional. Um, you'll be able to do all the live actions that you're already used to. And what happens is in your environment, let's say you have 50 machines, one machine will self-elect itself to be the relay and it will always connect to our cloud server and ask for updates. If there are updates, it will inform the appropriate machines to go grab those updates uh, from the cloud itself. So rather than every single machine pinging the cloud, you will just have that one machine uh, pinging us in your environment. Um, so if you ever have that inkling to get rid of that machine or that hardware that you've um, kind of allocated just for that relay, you now have the option to get rid of that. All you need to do is under my sites, you have to go in and check live actions. And once you enable live actions, you can go into your cache server settings under deep freeze on demand and disable your cache, um, your, your relay server uh, on that machine. So I'll, I'll walk you through that during the demo. Another item that um, we introduced uh, last year was the ability to perform on-demand maintenance. What that means is um, there are situations where you know you have a 24/7 environment. Uh, we do require you to set up a maintenance period in the policy because we're essentially going to run whatever policy or maintenance period. Um, settings you have specified on that machine in real time. So when you say run maintenance period, we'll essentially take the maintenance period settings for that policy and run it on that machine right away. All right. Once you're done doing what you need to do, you can end that maintenance period. All right. So hopefully that'll be able to 
you'll be able to then do more on-demand maintenance in your environment should the need arise. And then lastly, what I wanted to talk to you about was the DFreeze Administrator app. Um, please, if you are using it, I wanted to request as a product manager if you can put your feedback on it, give it a, a rating, and tell us what you think about it. Um, but essentially what this uh, DeepFreeze Administrator app lets you do is it lets you manage your entire environment from the comfort of your mobile device. Uh, there's also some neat functionality in there which allows you to, for example, scan QR codes um, and, and also you'll get push notifications when we have alerts. Uh, so we do have a Google uh, app, an Android app, as well as an iOS app. If you're curious about the scan QR functionality, what's really neat about it is you can you can run the scan QR code functionality, go to defreeze.com slash connect, and if the cloud agent's not installed on that machine, it will basically pop up the cloud agent, and then you'll be able to install the cloud agent on that machine right away. If you want, you can also run the console on that machine. So essentially the design for this is we have all these remote workers, uh, you know, Ad administering all these machines and you don't necessarily want to enter your password on those machines because you know you have people around watching you um, so now you'll be able to actually uh, run your console or install your cloud agent without even having to put your password into that machine same on the cloud agent so once the cloud agents installed you see that smaller QR code on the right if you click on control alt shift f7 you'll see this pop-up shop and when you um, scan that QR code you'll be able to do a live action on that machine right away um, so if you don't want to bother searching for that machine then you'll be able to essentially just scan that QR code and do what you need to All right, so what I'll do now is I'll walk you through the demo of it. Um, uh, just give me one second to get uh, prepared. All right, so let's go right into the uh, demo part of it. Uh, so for the enhancements, I talked to you about the anti-executable product. Um, so uh, this is what it looks like when I go into anti-executable. You can just go in here and click on anti-executable. And this is your control center for anti-executable. It may take a few minutes if you have a lot of workstations, a few seconds. Um, but essentially, you'll be able to see exactly what's happening. Uh, and then drill down your workstations based on that. So you see uh, these machines on the bottom will get dr drilled down as you go through, all right? And this is actually where you set up your file events. So this is where I have 495 uh, pending files to review where I can go in and choose to allow it or block it, right? So I can choose multiple files and allow it in all policy control lists or reported policy control list. Okay, uh, and then what happens is when you do that, it will build the uh, the policy itself and it will build the control list inside the policy itself. Um, so if I take this, um, AE policy under anti-executable you'll be able to see the different stages that you can turn on and then this is the policy control list where you can allow or block your files all right so hope you're able to um, play around with that again if you are a premium customer this is already part of your bundles so uh, you're welcome to um, play with it and turn it on if you're not already using the product 
All right, so up next is the Deep Freeze dashboard. Uh, for the Deep Freeze dashboard, you simply go to the home page and click on Deep Freeze dashboard. And again, just like the AE page, you can now filter all these workstations that you have. So here are the nine thawed machines, and I have uh, three machines that are outdated. So then I can go in and select, 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 we'll do more actions, and then um, I can assign it to a group or do wake up or do, ma do maintenance and run Windows updates, whatever else I need to do on that machine, okay? For the mobile device management, if you go to the MDM section here on the top right, you'll be able to go through and see your full platform, which you have deployed here. Uh, so here you can see I have three iOS devices and one Android device deployed in my test environment. And then um, if I go to devices, uh, you'll be able to see your, oh, sorry. I'm supposed to be on the MDM cloud site and go back to MDM and devices. Here we go. So this is where all my devices show up. I've got three iPads uh, showing up here. Uh, one uh, is 50% in battery. And if I actually click on one of these, I'll be able to see exactly where it is. I can refresh the location on it or sync the device and then also have all this inventory information on that machine. All right. Uh, I think I showed you that you can move it to a group, you can send a message to it, you can lock it down, you can push the assigned apps to it again if you need to, clear the passcode, select wipe it, which essentially wipes all the applications that you've installed on it, and then full wipe will essentially fully wipe that um, tablet. Under groups, so I'm not going to go through uh, both iOS and Android. I'll just walk you through the uh, Android, uh, sorry, the iOS and then Android functionality is very similar to how it behaves. Uh, so for the default uh, group, let me just select, uh, how about I select this one? Uh, you can specify which wireless networks um, which you set up under your settings, uh, which uh, web clips you want to have, and if you have any wallpapers, you can specify uh, those wallpapers. I have the deep freeze MDM wallpaper on this machine. Uh, then you build your apps in here, and then once you have your apps built, you can go in and select which ones you want to install on that machine. So of course on this one, Snapchat is not selected. Uh, then we have a host of restrictions you can provide, uh, such as blocking the uh, camera or not allowing screenshots. And then, of course, for supervised devices, you have more functionality available to you. And then we have a very granular control over what kind of passcodes you want to enforce on those machines. Uh, let's leave that. And then we have the apps page. Uh, this is where you build your apps. You can specify your VPP in here as well, which is your volume purchase program. And then when you add an app, you'll be able to add your uh, apps by simply searching for them in here. Under settings, you have the ability to set your wireless networks, your web clips, your wallpapers, and uh, you also set up your push certificates, your DEP environment, uh, and then your Android for work and your device assignment for Android. So as you can see, it's very straightforward, very intuitive to use. Um, and hopefully you'll have a chance to try it out in your environment. Up next after mobile device management is we've got Active Directory integration. So what now we allow you to do is add AD users. So that's my Active Directory domain that I have set up. And if I search for Adam here, I can select Adam, click on Next. So this is his Active Directory um, credentials. And then I'll be able to click on Next. So I specify what permission I want to uh, provide to Adam. If I want to make him just a DeFreeze Limited Administrator, I can say he's allowed to the following sites, 
he has the ability to do these, this group, and then he has the ability to perform the following actions. So whether it be shutdown, restart, or whether you want to do defreeze command actions, and then of course, tags, tags, tags everywhere. You go next, and that's it. When you add the user, it will add the user, and it will send them an email saying that you have been invited to defreeze uh, cloud, and that you can log in with your Active Directory credentials. The way you set up your Active Directory is you click on the Active Directory integration button here, and then you set up your uh, domain in here. So basically you install your AD Authenticator, you add your AD users and groups, and then log in using your AD credentials. All right, um, so the first step here, of course, is to download your AD Authenticator. That is Active Directory integration in a nutshell. Up next is the Deep Freeze Mac. Why do I have no machines in here? So I click on Deep Freeze on demand on my Vancouver site. And you'll notice I have all these Windows machines. And if you keep scrolling, I have these Mac machines as well. So if you do select all of them and freeze them, you can do that. But if you just chose the Mac machines, you'll notice that these are the functionalities available to you on a Mac device. So you can restart, shut down, reboot frozen, reboot thawed, do maintenance like uh, and tag the machine and move it to a group. Okay. I won't show you the policy interface, but essentially in the policy interface there's a heartbeat setting. And in that heartbeat setting, you want to set it to a live action if you want to en enable the ability to do uh, live actions on your uh, deep freeze Mac computers. And then uh, next, I have alerts. So for alerting, uh, what we have what it is in here, you have all these alerts that uh, show up. And under manage alerts, you see all these different alerts that are available to you. If you subscribe to them by email, then you'll get an email notification. If you subscribe to them by mobile, then you'll get a push notification. So these are all the antivirus alerts available to you, and these are all the anti-executable alerts available to you. And uh, soon, Deep Freeze will come in here. All right, so those were the enhancements I had covered. Uh, up next, I wanted to talk to you about uh, some of the tips that I had covered. So one of the things I talked to you about was sites. Uh, so when I go to the top here and click on My Sites, I'll end up on this page. And um, if you edit a site, this is what I'm talking about is the uh, live action functionality. And I'll show you that about the cache server um, coming up next. Uh, but essentially, this is where you set up your different sites. When you add a site, you can designate different users in that environment as well. All right. Now uh, we have the Deep Freeze uh, Utilities page. So under Utilities, we do have the one-time password generator. So this is where you get that one-time password generator I talked to you about for the Deep Freeze product. Then we have the uh, cache server. So the cache server, as you know, is under utilities as well. Um, so if you go in here, we have the software updater cache server and the antivirus cache server. But essentially, it's the same executable file that you download. And then when you run that um, file, you'll be able to enable just the software updater caching. And if you use your antivirus, then you can enable the antivirus caching as well. For the full installer, I don't think I need to show you that. But essentially, you go to the home page, you click on your deployment options, and you'll be able to see the uh, full installer. For the on-demand relay, this is what I was talking to you about, about being the cloud relay now being um, optional. So in our case, we, we've had this installed for a long time now. So it is enabled in our, in our environment. But if I were to disable this and go to Deep Freeze On Demand, 
then you'll notice that I can still do everything I need to. The only thing I will not be able to do is assign uh, schedules, uh, remote launch, and push and launch. All right. As far as uh, tagging is concerned, I can simply tag this way. Um, so if you are not aware of this functionality, when I uh, tag something, I can actually tag it with three different types of tags. The, the red tag is, the blue tag is the regular tag. The red tag is the ticket tag. And the green tag is the location tag. All right, so those are the three different tags that are available to you, um, so you can easily find your computers. Uh, and then here's the broken keyboard tag, for example, that I've created. And if I go OK, I can now add a broken keyboard tag on these machines, go to my uh, tags management page, and if I click on broken keyboard, I'll be able to see all the machines that I need to go and uh, review. All right. Uh, search, I'll go into the computers page, for example, and click on search. And let's say I'm looking for North America. So as you can see, I can see all the machines, uh, groups with any policies that have a tag, uh, any managed uh, software. Uh, and, and essentially, you can now filter those machines. Uh, based on those um, criteria. You are aware of our dashboards now. So uh, you saw the AE dashboard, the defreeze dashboard. Of course, we have the user stats dashboard and the MDM dashboard. Um, the other thing I want to show you was the um, ability to perform your maintenance task here. So you can run the maintenance period, and you can say how long you want to run that maintenance period, and click on OK. That's it. Um, if you do want to try our mobile uh, app, you can go under Utilities and click on Mobile. You can scan this QR code, and you'll be able to then quickly um, install the app from here, or simply go to the App Store and search for Deep Freeze Administrator. Um, on that, um, on your, in your app store. So that's everything for me. Uh, hopefully, you guys uh, learned something from you. As I promised, I wanted to wrap this up in 45 minutes, which I was successful in doing. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Adam and uh, see if he has uh, any questions that everyone's asking that he can address. Thanks, everyone, for your time today. Okay, well, I want to again want to thank everyone for their time again. Uh, biggest question I've been getting is, are we going to make a download of this available for everybody? The answer is yes. Um, there's a few people who've already sent us notes saying they couldn't make it in today, and we've got another session tomorrow. So we're going to be uh, bringing that up and getting a video posted shortly, and we'll get an email out to everyone who's attended or registered with that uh, information. A um, couple of questions have come up. One of the first ones that popped up was uh, some clarification around the Active Directory component. Um, so, He-Man, if we can pop back to the screen with the uh, with the user management. Uh, so, the way this works is we install again a small utility on a machine that is tied into your Active Directory uh, environment, and then what happens is that becomes a relay that allows us to then authenticate and communicate with everything. Um, and again, you can add groups in, you can add individual users in. It allows you to have a little bit of flexibility as to how you're going to allocate that. Um, but again, if you're, it is included as part of the ultimate package. If you're on like the premium or um, a basic package, uh, let us know. And what we can do is have your account rep reach out to let you know about the details of getting access to that. Okay. And again, as always, we can get a 30-day eval set up for anyone that wants to give that a shake. Um, looking through here, um, question about the deep freeze alerts. Now, that's something new that we're working on and hasn't quite hit yet. So we don't have a huge amount of details to share. The specific question that I was asked was, will we be able to send an alert when a machine has been thawed for a period of time? What I can tell you is that is the most 
frequent piece of feedback that we have had with the alerting. Um, it is the most frequent user story that has come up. So I would have an extremely hard time envisioning a scenario where we do not do that. Uh, so that, that is definitely something that's on the radar for that when we go and get that launched. Um, some more interest in tagging on the tickets. Um, again, the, we can go and flip back, we can flip back into the tickets piece. Um, or the tags piece, it allows us to again tag with a couple different types of tags. The first one being that ticket tag that Heman's bringing up for us now. That allows us to, you know, isolate machines. So if we had a broken keyboard and mouse, we can pick that off. And uh, then we can again get into geography tags. So, you know, physical locations, buildings, rooms, floor numbers. Um, and then that just can be searched wherever you need to search. So it's again just another neat tool to give you the ability to uh, organize your machines and pull them in and kind of single out the machines that you need to be going after. Um, uh, that's about it. Um, yeah, so that's the, the majority of the questions. If anyone has any other questions, please feel free to chuck them into the questions field there. Um, or if there's anything specific that you guys wanted to see, we'll give you a minute to kind of Toss your feedback in there while we wait. Um, Iman, I believe, has a couple other points he wants to jump in on. I just wanted to clarify, um, not clarify, but if you do have any specific questions or if you want any walkthroughs, if you can put it in chat, uh, if you want us to call you back on something, just add it to the chat. We'll go through the chat. Uh, if you want the your uh, account manager to reach out to you, then let us know. If you want tech support to reach out to you on something, then let us know. And then we'll um, appropriately follow up with everyone. Make sure that you're getting the most out of this um, webinar. Uh, so feel free to ask us what you need to uh, in the chat itself. We'll download the log and, uh, and and make sure that we follow up with you soon soon after. Okay, and another question just popped in. Um, are we looking at providing the ability to update other software on machines besides doing system updates? That is something that we have added in. So if, he man, can you bring up a policy with the software updater component for us? Uh, we do have a component in the cloud we call software updater. Software updater has a number of third-party products that we automatically are able to update and control and, uh, you know, basically to see what's going on with. Um, we'll just need a Windows policy there. That one, any one of them will work there, yeah. And on the software updater, as I said, there's a number of ones that we handle out of the box. So the major web browsers, PDF readers, bunch of development tools. Um, you know, we handle Steam for gaming cafes, not that any of our educational customers are gonna wanna have that on their machines, but things like Flash Player, Java, Silverlight, that type of thing are kind of key. What we also do is in conjunction with the usage stats component, what we can do is we can allow you to build your own custom packages that can be used to update third-party software that we're not directly supporting yet. Um, it just requires you to park that somewhere where the workstations can pull a copy of whatever installer file you need. And yeah, it just goes through and picks it up during the maintenance mode and reports on it in the managed software list. Uh, as you can see here. Um, so yes, that functionality is already in there. It's something that maybe might have not have been jumping out at you right away, but if you'd like a walkthrough on setting it up or getting that up and going, please just feel free to drop us a note and the support team can uh, give you a hand with that on that. And we've had a request to show the Mac user interface again. There we go. Um, so if you go, yeah, just add a new Mac policy in there. So for the Mac, for Mac OS support, currently that's just the Deep Freeze Mac component. Uh, we haven't built out the software updater and other components into that yet. Uh, for doing software updates for the Mac, that's handled with a maintenance window. So the way you would do that is you'd click on the maintenance tab and add a maintenance event. And you can see there's an option here to install Apple software updates. And that allows you to run those updates during that scheduled time frame there. Okay. 
All right. I think that's the bulk of the questions that we've had coming in. Um, there are one or two that I'll respond to directly, but other than that, I think that about wraps it up. So I would like to thank you all for your time today. We really appreciated you popping in and uh, spending your afternoon with us. And uh, we hope you have yourselves a wonderful rest of your afternoon. And as I said, we'll get a copy of this uh, webinar recorded and cleaned up and popped up online for folks to reference if they weren't, even to, weren't able to make it or they uh, wanted to give it another run through. And again, if there's any questions you have, the support team are more than happy to give you a, give you a handle with anything you need. Uh, so just drop us a line, support at pharonics.com, or uh, you can get our support portal at uh, support.pharonics.com. Perfect. Thanks, Adam. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And uh, we look forward to it. One thing I want to encourage is, uh, is uh, please provide your feedback by clicking on that bugle in the bottom right corner and uh, join the uh, customer forum that we have in place today. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.